everyone, it's Keely. I'm hooking a teacup. Um, I'm going to make a granny square today. This is going to turn into a crochet community cuddle blanket with the help of you guys. Um, I am going to ask you later on what your favourite colour is. Well, you can put it down in the comments now if you want to anyway. I'm using a 4mm hook, um, that's a G hook in the US. There's a darning or a yarn needle and a pair of snazzy scissors. I'm using Stylecraft Special DK, shade name is Meadow, shade code is 1065. I'm going to make a slip knot that can also be used as a magic ring. It's the easiest way I know of doing it. So if you pull the yarn tail, it makes the yarn tighten. So for now, imagine that's a magic ring. Okay, so this is the way that I hold my yarn and I can never get it right the first time so I have to do it again to get the tension right and I hold on to the bottom of the slip knot and I chain two and now I'm going to do a UK treble US double into what is my magic ring and then I've got three loops I yarn over and pull through two I've got two loops and I yarn over and pull through those two and that's my first stitch although it is my second because the chain two counts as a treble or a double. So this is the third one and that will create a cluster, a granny cluster. So now to create the corner I chain three and yarn over into the magic ring, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over into the ring, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two. That's two done. And then the third one will create the second cluster. Chain three to create the next corner. into the magic ring, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, and it's pretty good this stitch because it can make your work grow pretty quickly. That's the third cluster, chain three for the next corner. It's fiddly for me trying to record around my phone. So you might notice that my hands are a bit shaky. I was nervous anyway, my shoulders were up near my ears. But I was also stretching. So then I always look for the third stitch, the second stitch, go into that lazy stitch there. And then when you put your hook in, do a slip stitch and it pulls up that chain too. And then it looks like a cluster. So that's your first round. Round one, ding ding. Now I've got to um, try to get rid of that hole in the middle. So I pull the yarn tail and the magic ring tightens. Behave. And then you just get that yarn tail and thread it through your needle any which way you can. And you try to weave it around the ring. I was going to say circle, but it's a ring. I know what I mean. Sometimes. So I don't like to waste thread, so I don't leave that long a yarn tail. That's why I push my yarn needle in first. If you fold over your yarn, you can sometimes thread it through a bit easier. Tips and tricks for you there. 
it's only what I've seen on YouTube. And if you can hold on to it without it unthreading itself. And you basically do that until you can't get your thread into your needle anymore. Or you get the ump and you throw your work down and walk away for a bit. And pull it. And you probably should go back and weave in the other way as well to create more friction so that it doesn't loosen. But that's that hole disappeared. Magic. Fabulous. So round one, magic being tightened, round two. Wrap it back with my fingers again. Sometimes I wrap it around my middle finger instead of my little finger. It's fine, whatever works. So to get up to round two, chain two and turn. This stops the granny square from going a bit wonky donkey. So I've created a cluster with chain three. And again, I live in the UK, so I'm giving um, the UK terminology, but I often work in US terminology, so if I slip up, forgive me. You know what I mean. You can see what I'm doing, hopefully. So a cluster, chain three, a cluster, and then to join the corners or whenever you're working on a side cluster, you chain one. You're never too old to learn. So I'm 42 now and I've been doing this for a couple of years on and off. I had a lovely lady show me and I love it. I find it much easier than knitting. Right, so I've made another cluster. So to get down to the next corner, I'm gonna chain one just like I did there. And then work into that corner chain space. I have a mini shawl on the chair opposite, a ball of King Cole Riot in shade Funky, I think, just to hide my good chair really, I'm not showing off my amazing crochet skills, although they are lots of clusters, and a plant, and my teacup. cluster, so then chain one, create another cluster, how do you hold your hook? I think I'm supposed to hold it like it's a knife, other people hold it like it's a pencil. Right, so cluster, chain three, Another cluster into that chain space. And this is a bit fiddly, just make sure you've got three loops on your hook. Pull through two, pull through two again. And then you need to chain one. Look for that third treble, the second treble, top of that. Go in there, run over, pull through, and pull through again, and that's the slip stitch. So that's round two, and that makes that more look like a cluster, look more like a cluster even. 
on to get on my nerves, so I'm just snipping that off now. I should have woven it back in the other way, but never mind. See, it's the same both sides. Now, yarn three. If you ever notice, the front of the loop is always attached to the ball of yarn, so if you ever want to make it larger, pull the front piece of yarn. So I chained two, turned, and started working in the chain space. So to get from the side cluster, I just chained one and then started my cluster for the corner, and then on the corners, we chained three, one two and three. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. You can change the playback speed if you're learning. There are other tutorials that are better than mine probably. If you already know how to crochet then you can just watch me and laugh at how many times I'm getting things wrong. I don't care, I laugh at myself enough. Not because I'm a hilarious person, just because I'm daft. Oh shush, my son's just sent me a message. I tried to record earlier today, but the dogs usually like to come and sit with me and want to sit on my lap and bark at the post lady or just do something dark, so that wasn't happening. So I've just done the second corner, it's going into the side now, side three, oh my lord, it really does stop, oh no, that was my husband, real life people, real life, my life is never that exciting that I get messages so close together. So just working on the third corner for the cluster, I've done chain, uh, three chains and working on the next cluster. Hands are getting quite achy and the shoulders are really feeling stretched now. So I'm working on the fourth side, if you consider that we work, started working the first. So those ones only require a chain one afterwards. Can't remember what I did there. Might have just taken a sip of tea. And three, and the last cluster. I don't really understand UK terminology. I understand US more because a single crochet is a single crochet. You're just pulling the yarn through once. But then I guess if you count the slip stitch, I don't know, it's confusing. Okay, so I'm now joining again. I always look at that third treble, then the second one going to the top of that. So we've done one, two, three rounds now. 
And you can count that out by counting the clusters. So round four is the final round I'm going to be doing today. Chain two, turn, working in the chain spacing. I mean, if you don't crochet and you're still watching, well done. I find crochet quite mesmerising, so I'm not even looking at my own winky hands. I'm just watching what the needle's doing, like I would if I was doing it myself in real life. I mean. Well, normally I would say that my favourite colour is blue, but I really like the combination of greens, pinks and purples. So I was quite pleased to see that board for the shawl behind the teacup. I was just tightening the tension a little bit there then. I mean, it's all fairly loose, but it was too loose. Right, so I chain one to get me to the next chain space. Chain one is taking me to the corner. Three more UK trebles or US doubles to create another cluster. And coming out of the corner, I chain one. Those of you that notice some marks on my wrist, I haven't been self-harming. It's um, well, I have been, but not, you know what I mean. Anyway, um, I always burn myself when I'm getting food out of the oven, even when I use oven gloves. I don't know why I'm just a clumsy fool. Don't worry about me. I mean, there's a lot to worry about, but don't worry about that. So I've had a few shout outs, um, which is really surprising and really good feedback from my first video, which was a trailer style. Um, I honestly thought like four or five people would watch that, so I'm absolutely amazed with the response that I've got, honestly. Um, so thank you to everyone. Um, I'm trying to reply to people, but it's been a bit difficult when I've been trying to work out how to work this smoothie editing software as well, so bear with me. Um, so a thank you to Sandy and a thank you to Sadie um, and the season of the granny challenge is being run or being uh, thrown out there if you like by Glenda at Creative Grandma and Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Um, at the end there are some movie titles where you can see their channel names and I love this crochet community. Um, I had a hysterectomy back in September and started to crochet because I couldn't move, I had to rest. 
and started watching crochet videos and ended up um, watching Last Minute Laura and discovering the live chats and all the lovely people on there and then I started watching Crochet Rocks and she does live streams and just found a, a lovely sense of loveliness in the world that wanted to be a part of. Um, so yeah, thank you to all of those people. Um, and I wouldn't have put my first video out if it wasn't for Brenda. So hey Brenda! <laughs> Thanks for, I don't know whether you really talked me into it or not, maybe I was thinking about it anyway. I just thought it made you chuckle. Okay, so the last cluster and then chain one to join, push it into not the third but the second one to bring up the chain two, make it nice and tall. And I'm only going to do four. So, because I'm going to change colour with the help of you lovely people, I'm going to slip stitch all the way along to the corner now so that my yarn is kind of woven in. It still takes me to the corner anyway, I don't know if you might find that useful. I'll stay to the very end as well and then you'll see me walking the dogs. So I'm just tightening them up there by pulling the back of the loop, making it longer by pulling the front of the loop, pulling it out. And then we have four rounds. They don't look too wonky donkey. a little bit but not too much and then I'm just going to weave that in as best as I can so I just folded that one over that piece of yarn over and that's pretty short and then just try to weave it in and out whip stitch styling Take it back through. When I work the next round, it'll uh, it'll make it a, a bit more secure too. But oh, I did actually remember to go back the other way. Well done, Keely, yesterday. On the sizey scissors again, and there we are, looking all neat and tidy. Quite unusual for me, and just to prove that they are exactly the same size and that I did exactly the same. There we go. Honest mum. So. That's what you do all the way round for round five, it'll be the same, and then round six, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So, now it's up to you guys which colour should I do next? You can decide by putting a comment below and give me a like. Have a great time! Keep looking!